There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very, very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with an author by the name of Ray Ray. Ray, how are you, brother? Yeah, I'm, I'm well, thanks. Thanks so much for having me here. Okay, it's awesome to have you. So let me just say, before I go into his bio, his book, The Labyrinth, which is Rewiring the Nodes in the Maze of Your Mind, was just literally a book that was recommended to me you know, on Amazon and that you may find interesting or you may like. And so I ordered it on a whim and it is a profound book. It is, it is, it is one of the, I would say, of the 21st century, it is one of the best books that I have read. And coming from me, that's a lot because I am a prolific reader. I read eight to 12 books a month. I'm reading every book that you could possibly think of that's relevant from a consciousness vibration space. So to Ray, who is only a 35-year-old you know, definitely a master. Uh, I'm grateful to have you on your on my show here today because we're going to be talking about some very relevant and resonant topics, you know, in, in the space. So let me give you guys his bio. So he is an astrologer, again, as I said, an author and a novelist. He specializes in tools such as future self-shifting, shadow work, astrology, and yoga meditation, which have been very helpful in his experience of teaching himself how to integrate fear-based emotions limiting beliefs, and redundant habits. Now he employs those same tools to support others in achieving the same. His goal is to help others come full circle like he has by aiding others and reconnecting to their innermost child and bringing their future self into the present. Let us be the future together. Amazing. Uh, again, I just want to say I don't have his book, unfortunately, because my 14-year-old daughter, Alex, is reading it, which I'm grateful for. Um, but I took so many copious notes and I highlighted so many passages. And I actually, I remember I started reading your book on my first trip to yeah. Mexico this year, which was in May. And I finished it in, in like two days, you know, and, <laughs> and for you guys out there, um, you know, it's that type of book. It's a real page turner. But so anyway, <clears throat> as I do on these podcasts now, Ray, when I bring people such as yourself on, um, I kind of want to get your sense of where we're headed. And I know it's an opinionated question and you know, you're perfectly entitled to say yay or nay. I think a lot yeah. of people can look at the world right now and they can say, you know, it's glass half full. There's never been a better time to be alive. And then of course you can also take the negative, um, yeah, you know, course, yeah. the NWO and all these things. So, you know, oh. I'm kind of interested in your take. I mean, I still look at the world as half full. Uh, and I will say that there may be much more darkness before dawn, but we are going to create the new earth slash the golden age. Do you see okay. something similar? What is your take of, say, the next three to five to ten years? Well, the transformation of consciousness, it occurs not only on an individual level, but also a collective level. But the same laws are true. When you you know begin your awakening and you become more self-aware then obviously what the first thing that happens as a result of that is that you become more aware of what's always been inside of you some of the fear-based beliefs the thought patterns the emotions the habits etc they all come into consciousness and it's like whoa you know i didn't even realize that all of this was inside of me and at first it can seem as if you're going a little crazy but you're not it's just that you're becoming more aware of what's always been there, yeah? Now, collectively, this is also the case. So as the frequency of the planet is ascending, of course, and more and more people are waking up collectively, we're seeing more and more of what's always been there. You know, the darkness, the, you know, I don't even want to say the word, but like, you know, the scandals, there's just so much in our society that is corrupt and it's all coming out on a political level, on a religious level, you know, on a, even an, an environmental level. 
you know, there's just so much coming to light right now. And this is all just part of the process, of course, because we can't integrate something on a collective level as well that we don't see. You know, so you can apply the same process collectively that you do individually as you're going through your own awakening process, you know. So the microcosm really meets the macrocosm in that regard. And that's where we're at right now, obviously. The next, how many years did you say? Was it five to 10 oh, years? Say, yeah, just kind of like next three or five to 10 okay, years. Okay, so I did say, like you just read in my bio that I'm an astrologer yeah. as well, yeah? So in 2024, Pluto is going to be moving into Aquarius, okay? Now, Aquarius is the sign of humanitarianism, equality, altruism, etc. But it's also the sign of futuristic technologies as well. You know, um, Pluto is obviously the planet of transformation as well. So, so we're going to be seeing a lot more in political, societal upheavals for sure. But on the flip side of that, we're also going to be seeing new technologies coming out. New healing technologies as well are going to be um, introduced, especially for people, in my opinion, who suffer from like dementia, Alzheimer's disease, etc. Because Pluto is moving into that sign of Aquarius, you know. So, we'll, in my opinion, in the next twenty or so years, because I think Pluto will stay in Aquarius for around. 18 to 22 years or something like that so because it's the outermost planet so it moves the slowest it takes 240 years to orbit the sun you know so it moves really slow and um, but that's going to be happening within the next two years that's going to be a huge shift I, i'm not sure what your take on this in particular is but you know the whole extraterrestrial thing as well you know you're seeing more and more sightings even the government now in your country is coming out saying that there are definitely unidentified you know aerial phenomena out there yeah. you know that we don't know what they are but they're there they're not of this world we can't explain them they've got technologies that transcend our own etc you know in my opinion as well that's going to become more and more highlighted as well more and more people are going to be experiencing things in that regard as well i myself have experienced contact with being some other world um, some of your viewers may think i'm a little crazy saying that but i'm not alone i know a lot of right. other people who have had those experiences too so those beings are also watching the drama unfold basically right. they're leaving us to our own devices because you know a forced evolution isn't going to help anyone we need to do it ourselves we need right. to fix ourselves we need to heal ourselves of course if if we were about to destroy the planet they'd probably intervene but that's probably the only um case that they would the rest obviously you know we're seeing a lot of turbulence now the war in ukraine as well um you know, there's just so much chaos right now, and it's so difficult to remain centered. You know, we've just well, we're still in it. We've just come out of the pandemic as well. You know, so it's just it's just crazy. But it is crazy. But the one key to all of this is I'm not gonna like, even though it may seem as I've ju I've just predicted the future a bit. Um, that will happen anyway, no matter. Right. You know, it's just gonna come anyway. But like. The key to all of this, the key to really managing yourself through these turbulent waters that we're experiencing right now is to find your own center, right. to live from your center, because in your consciousness, in your true self, you are untouched by anything that happens, anything. So it's important to learn how to access that stillness within you. Right. Right. Because then you can meet any challenge head on because you'll know that ultimately nothing that happens in this world can define you That's right. because in your consciousness, you are eternal and everything that happens ex externally is transitory in nature. It's fleeting. Every experience you have, no matter how good or bad their experience feels, ultimately it's a transitory experience. And so you can't really throw all your eggs all your eggs of your happiness into the, the baskets of those experiences, obviously, because, you know, they come and go. So that's the the advice that I want to give people over the next five to ten years, especially, to start learning how to access their center, to start learning how to be still within themselves. Beautiful, but, man. Um, you said a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, look, you know, I want to get to your book, again, The Labyrinth, rewiring the nodes and the maze of your mind. You, you and I are, <clears throat> we're very similar. You know, you spoke a lot about the higher self. You know, yeah. I, I literally tell people 
and I and I do this in lectures, and I just was actually on the phone with the people that uh, are putting together this big symposium that I'm the featured speaker at in Northern California. In I don't know, it's the first first weekend, I think, first uh, sec- beginning of the second week of August. Anyway, you know, they were asking about my slide deck, and you know, to have you updated it or whatever. But we we got into like a little off the beaten conversation about. You know, because I, I I did update a couple of things, but I, you know, I was speaking, she wanted a clarification on like one of my talking points, which is allowing to be guided and connected to your center, your still, the still, the still moment of the higher self versus reacting through the ego, which is essentially your reptilian brain or reptilian consciousness. And she, you know, she wanted to get clarification of that. So, you know, it's funny because like in your book, and again, I want you to kind of talk about your book, you know, what made you write it? Yeah. Because it is a profound book, but um, you know, that was one of the things, I mean, there's a lot of things in there that I highlighted that I talked, that I would like to talk about, but I don't have the book in front of me here today. So I'm just going to kind of let you go uh, ad lib. But um, that was one of the things I thought that really resonated with me was, you know, how profoundly aware of the higher self you are. And, how important again that really is right because as we get older and we wake up further and further and our soul continues to evolve and grow you know in this experience of the third dimension uh we do have to get to an awareness where we want to lead by we want to be led or lead with our higher self right because our higher self is going to respond out of love and the ego the personality the mind wants to react out of fear so it's like if you can allow your higher self to lead you in almost every experience that you encounter or go through, uh, you're going to create a very resonant slash informed field. But anyway, talk about your book. It's so funny that you ans- you asked that question. First of all, this book came to me in a vision. I was actually out jogging one night. I think it was 2014. That's how long ago it was. It was a long time ago. Um, and I was out jogging and the idea just struck me like a bolt of lightning basically it was so profound that i actually saw the front cover in my mind's eye while i was while i was running like boom it was there so like uh, what i actually did is turn around and ran back home instead of finishing my lap ran back home and you know i i just had all these ideas like the contents or all of the topics that i wanted to discuss i just wrote them all down and then so i wouldn't lose the idea now, the reason why I called the book The Labyrinth, you know, because obviously the conditioned ego, the old self is like a maze. There are so, right. so many belief systems, perceptions that really, you know, we lose our true self when we identify with them. Yeah. Our true self. I mean, I don't see the ego personally, as you've probably read in the book, as a negative thing. Right, it's as, not a negative as, thing. Yeah, as a as a physical being, we have an ego, we have a persona. We have to and, survive. And, yeah, yeah. No, but also we with a person, you know, you can't be a human being without a personality. That's you right. need one, right? So right. the the human self is part of who we are as right as a physical being so we should in my opinion refine the ego you know to bring it up to its highest level to have a nice persona to be a channel for you know the wisdom of the divine etc and so that's also one what i want to teach in my book um i help people identify those limiting beliefs which really don't belong to them but they you know inherited from the minds of other people while they were growing up because as i said in the introduction in the book as well Especially during the ages of zero to seven, our brains are a lot more receptive to our environment as we're growing up. You know, children emulate everything that they see in their external environments while they're in those years, especially. Right. Their brain is in theta brain waves, which are that's more right. or less like a recording device. That's also why children are a lot more imaginative as well during those earlier years because the brain is in theta brain waves. Right. So everything that they see, the parents arguing and bickering and, you know, their siblings doing naughty things, they just emulate everything. And as a result, they become conditioned by their environments. And most of our conditioning actually does occur within the first seven years of our lives. Right. And then the rest of our life is really just experiences that reinforce that same conditioning right. over and over again. You know, so ultimately the goal, <clears throat> excuse me, Ultimately, the goal of the spiritual path, in my opinion, is getting back to who you were before the world told you who you are. To be childlike. Okay? 
Yeah, to get back. Now, I'm not saying go and sit in a playpen and build sandcastles all day. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean to get back to that childlike innocence, that right. unconditioned self. Right. Right. And that, in my opinion, also is the kingdom of God. That's, That's what right. Jesus spoke of. 100%. That is your true self. That is your yep. true self because it is. It, is un- it is unconditioned by the past. It right. is freed from the past. And ironically also, um, Jay, I'm actually writing a book about time right now. My right. second spiritual book will be about time itself and the transcendence of time, you know, and that's really, really what I'm getting to and hinting at in the labyrinth as well, of course. But um, my time book will explain this in even greater detail. So, well, feel free to share on that, and if if I can help you or write a forward or anything, I'd be, yeah. I'd, I'd, I would be honored yeah. to do that. Um, so, so, so back to that, uh, the childlike innocence. Um, this is also, and you talk about this too. Um, trauma is the trauma that people developmentally become developmentally disabled occurs in those first seven years too, right? Something happens to us, something we experience, it creates a block. And as we evolve, as we become older as adults without integration of it, or, you know, uh, therapy, however you want to seek it. I mean, it's usually through integration. Uh, it literally stymies us in our, uh, emotional, uh, mental, physiological. I mean, you know, there's, you talk to any good trauma therapist and they'll tell you that the majority of physiologically manifested disease states, uh, obesity, you know, alcoholism, sugar, addictions, whatever, all of these come from something that happened in those first formulative childlike seven years from like you Absolutely. said, something, Absolutely. something you observed from your parents. I mean, obviously there's also molestation and psychological deprivation and all those things, but yeah, they do. You're right. I mean, you come in as a blank slate, you know, Locke and Rousseau, the tabula. Well, Lata. well, I, I, let me just stop you there. I, I yeah. wouldn't say a blank slate. Well, you know what I mean? I you come in as a you have karma and you have, you know, uh, you know, whatever uh, from your past lives or whatever. But well, are, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. What I want to yeah. expand upon here, because as yeah. an astrologer, one of the readings that I do is a karmic reading. OK. And what this karmic reading entails is ha- some of the tendencies that you're bringing in from the past right. into this life. Okay. Right. However, however, even that is a bit of a misconception, isn't it? Because if you think about it, there is no linear space and time in the realm right. of spirit. Right. All things exist now. Right, exactly. All of your past, present, and future selves, they exist right now. Right. Right. That's so, great. so then. It's not as if you and those past lives are the same people in the sense that right. because you have your own consciousness and so do they, mm-hmm. right? However, those beings you're connected to on an oversoul level, you're connected, you're plugged into them subconsciously. So sure. you're, you're influencing them and they're influencing you. And that's where like a mirroring kind of effect right. happens between you right. and those other lives. So the key is to really overcoming your karma or yeah, I don't right. like the way personally but overcoming that karma or those samskaras like it's called in in the yoga traditions is to really close your connections or your associations with some of those lives that aren't saving you also that's where we get some of our gifts and abilities from as well right. though for example Mozart he wrote a he wrote an orchestra um, a song or a melody or whatever at four years old right you know? right like there, there's right. been some prodigies that have come through yeah that are clearly connected to other artists of the past. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But also yeah. um, you were just, you were just stating how obviously the, the, the formative years of our lives are the most critical. They're crucial. They absolutely are. But also a lot of the time we incarnate into environments, into situations on purpose to be conditioned. Right. To, because we want that challenge. Right. We want that kind of, Right. opposition because a life without challenge we'd be pretty bored well, well evolution evolution comes through the contrast i mean that's yeah. that's ultimately yeah. we what how would you how mm. would you gain wisdom if you didn't have to quote unquote struggle i mean i mean the struggle is the gift you know I, it a is, lot yeah. Of, yeah the gift you know i used to in one of my first books i coined the gift is in the shit and it really, <laughs> it really is right. Like the, the struggle, the contrast is where the evolution happens. I mean, you, you know, I mean, I know, you know, this and you're like the perfect guy age wise, but like, let's be honest, man, like people below the age of 30 yeah, have grown up with the freaking screen in their hand. 
Oh, God. You know, like, I know. Think about their lack of critical thinking skills and discernment because, Ray, why would somebody think about this? Why would somebody do research when they can say, hey, Google, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa? <laughs> right? You know what's, you know what's so crazy about it? Like, even me, I'm guilty. I've got an iPhone. Yeah, we. Right, of but course. like, but like, I'm I'm seeing that being so dependent and simply on autocorrect, for example. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, I'm forgetting how to spell certain words because for years <laughs> I've just pressed the the you know the the word at the top instead of Dude. thinking. You know, Dude. and that's just autocorrect. Like, yeah, we're so dependent upon technology that yeah. it's becoming crazy. And well, yeah. that's why young people. And again, I'm not ca- calling them out. I want to just make a point. I'm not judging or condemning, but. You yeah. know, my daughters are 12 and 14. And, and and again, you're 35. You're at the cutting edge where you didn't grow up with it. You know, it was a little mm-hmm. bit later. But I mean, if you're under the age of 25, you have grown up with a device in your hands at three, you know, some people probably sooner than that, but around three to five. So, I mean, look at this. Like, think of this. This is even crazier. We were talking yesterday. I can't remember who I was talking to, but think about what Amazon has done to our going out into the universe and experiencing shopping and being with other people and picking things up and touching them and trying them on and sampling. I mean, it has destroyed the experience of users as a being, you know, ambulating and, and really being this in, in, in places where other beings are. I mean, everything is so technologically driven that we don't really, until we really talk about it, we lose even, sight of it. Even like just eating, like you know, you can yeah. like Uber Eats and right. everything now. You, just, you don't need to go anywhere. You can get anything just to your to your door now. Anything, and I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing at all. Right. You know, but if you're just using that all the time, then you're going to isolate yourself yourself from everyone. And we need connection as human beings. Right. You know, right. we need to feel connected. But also, we kind of veered away from your initial question before yeah. about the higher self. Yeah. Um, because I just want to explain a little more about the higher self. Yeah, go ahead. People, because a lot of people don't really know what it truly means. Okay. Please do. So, so your higher self is ultimately the spirit version of you, which is beyond linear time. It's only your physical self and the ego that is bound by Mm -hmm. the illusion of time because it's incarnate in physical reality. Imagine a spirit version of Jay Campbell, right? He's up there in spirit, and he's just watching his physical self go through the motions, and he's capable of sending his physical self guidance Mm -hmm. You know, through his intuitive perception, that's how the higher self speaks to us through our intuitive perception. Yeah. Now, the higher self is beyond time. Thus, it can see the outcome of all the potential choices we could make in this life. It can see down every timeline we could experience, every one of them. And that's why it's important to form a conscious connection with it and to listen to its guidance, to heed its guidance, because it knows where all the brick walls are. It knows where all the primrose paths are. It knows which paths will cut you. It it knows where you're going to get hurt, etc. It's so unconditionally loving and supportive that even if you don't listen to it and you do end up crashing into a wall, it'll just pick it up, dust it off, and say, go on, keep going, etc. But um, on a physical level, we have to experience the unknown as the ego, yeah? But on a higher self level, there is no unknown because right. the unknown is only a concept that is bound by time. Right. If there is no time, there is no unknown. So your true self is beyond the unknown, and that's why it's important to embrace the unknown as an ego, as a physical self, knowing that your higher self has got your back. That's right. But, you that's know, right. So when you're connected and when you are integrated with it and you're aligned fully with who you truly are, that's why there's just no fear. Right, because exactly. you, because you're perceiving on a level beyond time, you know that everything it's all good. No matter what happens, there's a big picture to every situation. All challenges can be used for catalysts for the expansion of your consciousness if you use them in the correct way. Instead of reacting, like you said before, reacting subconscious patterns and reinforcing right. them. You know, responding instead, responding in a calm manner because a calm mind ultimately makes good decisions as well. Beautifully. Uh, I want to go deeper now because you brought up the higher self. So, I mean, I look at the higher self as your connection to divinity. Yeah, it is. Every person 
regardless of how far they've fallen and believe themselves separate you know, <clears throat> from source, which we know no one is separate from the love and connection of source consciousness. Uh, the higher self is what, you know, Yeshua, whoever that was, the mystical avatar being Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, the Christos, there's so many names, Ahara Mazda. I could go yeah. on and on. His message very simply was the kingdom of God is within you. Yes. And that message was the outsta outstanding pronunciation or proclamation that you have your connection to divinity through your higher self. And the higher self, again, as you said, can only be connected to or realized through work, right? Whether it's contemplation, introspection, meditation, sitting in stillness. You know, I love going into nature and just listening to the sounds of nature, oh, yes. the sound yeah, yeah. of God, right? So mm -hmm. like when, you know, this is a really good podcast to have this discussion because a lot of people will always message me and you say, you know, you talk about the higher self, but I don't really understand. I go to church every Sunday. <laughs> so, so it's, you know, it's kind of like, um, all those things you said are absolutely the truth, but like, if we can expound a little bit further, I want people to understand that the higher self is their super conscious wisdom. It is their intuition. It yes. is, it is the Christ of their own consciousness, AKA what my favorite statement of the higher self is it's the light of being hmm. when you are being all the time, you are not doing, 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 doing. And I'm not saying doing isn't cool, right? Cause you and I are doing this podcast and we're creating for the universe yeah. and all the great people that watch this, but you have to also uh, set time every day to be and being is the stillness. Absolutely. But the, the irony is when you're actually anchored in the higher self, when you're doing things, it actually doesn't seem as if you're the doer. Like you're There's a no writer, time. for example. You've There's wrote, not even time. Yeah, you go beyond it. Like you're a writer, for example. Have you ever been so absorbed in what you're doing? A whole day and there. It, it, and it's it just, it, the time goes, but also you don't feel like you're the doer. Something else is working through you. There's an intelligence. That's what happened that is, to you when you were running and you got the, the cover. I've had it happen to me an yeah, like, unlimited like, number of times. We go beyond our physicality in that state, and right. the creative state is also right. the childlike state. It's that unconditioned yeah. self. Right. That's why children are so creative at a young right. age, because they're so connected to that. You know, um, one of my other favorite sayings of Jesus while we're on the topic is, um, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto That's you. Right. So what he's saying initially, you should seek your true self, seek that connection with your higher self, exactly. and then all of your heart's true desires, not the desires in the whims of the ego, but all of your heart's true desires shall be made, to, shall be brought into fulfillment by being connected to your center. You, let me ask you a question about that. I told you we're going to go all over, but this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Do, Don't worry. do you think that the Bible the new testament the old testament the obviously the, the gospel of philip and the gospel of mark and then of course the the gospel of john you know the ones that were hidden the gnostic uh, yeah. books uh i mean that's truly profound stuff but do you think everything that quote unquote jesus aka yeshua said was in allegory or metaphorical to avoid the contamination that he knew was going to happen because of the dark side whatever you want to call it, the parasitic that energy everywhere around that's a profound question, and nobody's ever asked me that in that manner. So, well done. Um, now, there's some people who believe that Jesus didn't exist, that right. the whole gospel is just symbol symbolic of, like, you know, the 12 disciples of right. the 12 um, grunts right. in the brain, etc., right. and that right. Jesus is the soul. And you can look at it like that, and it will still save you in a very good way, of course. Because if you just externalize it like most Christians do, unfortunately, and you just revere an external form of Christ, then you're not really going to get much out of it. You may be inspired to, you know help feed homeless people and everything and that's all good you know that's a great thing but you're not really going to have that inner communion with god are you right. so right. The, jesus's message like you said before his fundamental message is that the kingdom of god is within you right and i'm actually a kriya yoga a disciple of paramhansa yogananda uh, you know his autobiography of, a of yogi. course yeah i've read all yeah, of yeah. Books. yeah so yogananda he's actually one of my spirit guides nice. he's come to me in dreams he's actually came with me he's visited me sorry with jesus believe That's it or awesome. not 
like because I was raised Catholic, I found his work oh, in I? yeah yeah I was raised Catholic, and you know what they say: if anything's not of Jesus, it's of Satan or whatever. <laughs> yeah, but but I was I was um, I was conditioned in that way subconsciously yeah. even, and I didn't My even realize it because. My awakening began in 2010, but I found Yogananda in 2011, and it felt like I just found my guru from past lives or sure, something, sure. right? But um, initially, uh, these teachings resonated with me that much, but then the the Catholic conditioning come in and was like, you know, it was like, um, nah, this is satanic, etc. So I actually <laughs> prayed. I prayed to God, prayed one night, and I received a message in a dream. He came to me with Jesus, Yogananda, and they both stood in front of me. That's awesome. And he, Jesus said to me, follow his teachings and meditate every day. That's what Jesus told me That's from then on. And Yogananda actually told his disciples that he was sent to earth to bring the original Christianity to the West, which had been lost in translation oh, at the yeah. time. Right. Yeah. And the original Christianity is, is, of course, that inner communion with God. Right. Now, I personally do believe Jesus existed because he's visited me on a few occasions. So was his mother, Mary. Right. So I know they're real. They are real beings. Um, I, maybe they don't look like they're depicted. Maybe they are more darker skin because they're from the Middle East. But that right. doesn't matter. No. It doesn't matter. It's their energy that matters. It's the connection right. to them. And ultimately, they're symbols of your inner self. Right. So right. Jesus spoke in parables, of course. That's why all of the great teachers speak in parables. They have to. So that, so that their teachings aren't distorted. And men of, le of a lesser understanding, if, especially the Pharisees back in those days, right. you know, who had them crucified, they couldn't understand what he was saying at all. And that's why they had them crucified. Um, so, yeah, that's why great masters do that. And that also, it's also in India as well. Same yep. thing happened, like the Mahabharata, for example, yep. one of the greatest stories ever told. It's complete allegory. Absolutely. The whole story. But there's so much wisdom in that in that story. Of course, but look, uh, I'll stop you because there's, there's a lot. This is a lot to unpack. Uh, the Bible is the same way. All of the ancient texts, the Bhagavad Gita, the Maharaja, the Akkadian, the Sumerian, the Babylonian, all of these amazing ancient texts were written in allegorical yeah. uh, style. And as you or, know, or based off historical right. figures and events, exactly. that's exactly. where. Uh, exactly. So just because Krishna, for example, is depicted as a king and a warrior right. who fought right. in the in the Kurukshetra War, it doesn't mean he actually did. He was exactly. actually a great a great sage, and his right. disciple wrote the Mahabharata to share his master's teachings with the world. So even though Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita he says all of these things, he didn't actually say it on the war on the battlefield in Kurukshetra. He said it in the caves in the Himalayas, but it's his disciple's way of getting his master's message out there in a, in a way where the teachings will be preserved because right. they will be preserved better if it's presented in a story. An oral tradition. Yeah. A story because yeah. stories don't get distorted. Exactly. exactly. Stories don't get, history does, but not actual stories. They don't. His story. Are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. Well, well, going exactly. back to what I was going to say, what I, going back to what I was going to say is, uh, the problem, as you know, Ray, is that the you know, especially with the Abrahamic adherents. Oh God, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, my one of my mentors used to call it the God spell, and the problem is, as you said already earlier too, you know, they've externalized every deity, they've externalized all of these you know mythical figures, and yeah. The literalists, which are most of the quote unquote professionals in the religion, you know, the religions of, you know, Catholicism, Presbyterianism, Protestantism, Judaism, Islam, they are literal interpreter, interpreters. And so then they push that narrative of utter nonsense, let's be honest, because we also know the dark side is hijacked, co op, corrupted. Yeah. And that you now, now you've taken the parishioner. 
the Sunday goer who doesn't even understand what, you know, Jesus said about like, you know, he, remember he also said you didn't have to go to a temple. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so the reality is, is that like the majority of people on this planet, and again, this is unfortunate and, and you are right. There are people waking up every day, thankfully, but they really do believe that everything is external from themselves. And it was how, again, the dark side, whoever is behind all of this, and maybe we can talk about that, who we think it is at some point. But the reality mm -hmm. is, is that they have kept people not from, the, from an inability of going within because everything yeah. has been external. Yeah. And so, you know, for their sins, they would be redeemed and, you know, everything is coming in the afterlife and all this stuff. So then none of these people do any of this internal work. And like you said, you know, meditation is of the devil or, you know, all it, it, it's mind blowing, like what kind of a quote unquote dumpster fire, you know, religiosity is from a, in, you know, a brainwave entrainment of the masses. And it's, it's really hard for people to truly figure out what's happening. It just depends on the person, in my opinion. Like, some people simply aren't ready to go within themselves. Right. So they, they just need that. I mean, I do believe everything can serve a positive purpose still. You know, some people simply aren't ready to dive deep within themselves. Now, every religion has both an esoteric and an exoteric side. The exoteric is, you know, the more mundane, you know, going to church, doing the rituals, you know, getting the bread, the wafer and the wine, etc. You know, that's the more exoteric side of Christianity, for example. The more esoteric side of Christianity and Catholicism would be seeing Mother Mary as the Kundalini, for example, you know, the divine feminine, and then the Christ, the Son of God, as your soul, your higher self, etc. Um, so, yeah, that's what a lot of people have done, sadly, to, you know, these deep truths. They always get lost in, in translation. But you've also got to consider that Jesus incarnated into this world in the darkest of ages like don't forget what what followed christ's incarnation think about it the middle ages you know from bc onwards you know you had the dark ages even prophet muhammad come a few years later you had you know the catholic the catholic church with the inquisition burning right. people even even burning its own saints joan of arc for example you know was burnt like so Jesus came at the darkest of ages. He came in the Kali, what's known as Kali Yuga, right? It's known as the Dark Age historically. And um, we've come out of that now in around 1700. And that's where, you know, science is beginning to rediscover, you know, that consciousness exists, you know, through like quantum physics and everything like that. Especially it took precedence in the early 1900s with, you know, Einstein as well. Um, discovering special relativity and you know more and more awareness of the nature of consciousness itself is coming to fore now and we're starting to banish really the vision of god being an old man with a beard and you know like these are all really medieval or archaic symbols of the true nature of existence but a lot of people are still stuck in those outdated concepts and that's why we're seeing a lot of externalization still within people's practice of their religion and their spirituality as well okay beautiful okay so i want to get back to some of your talking points but we can kind of correlate them um yeah it's all connected anyway yeah, it's all connected yeah, yeah yeah but i mean are you familiar with uh dr david mm -hmm. hawkins and the map of consciousness um to be honest no i've okay, never heard fine. Them. that's fine we, 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 i'll just like slightly correlate it but basically it's uh Dr. Hawkins quantified the consciousness field from zero to a thousand zero being like the red root chakra lowest field to, you know, the bluish purple, you know, yeah, violet. Yeah, Around, yeah. yeah, exactly. Being like a thousand or whatever. And it, it, it's, it's interesting. You know, a lot of his books are profound. I mean, that's, that's what's so crazy is like your book is so profound and you have, you cover so much of the same things that his books do. And so, like you said, we're all connected you know, through that energy and frequency of resonance. But anyway, to talk about astrology, I want to set you up. Uh, I'm a big Essene guy. I believe that you and I were probably Essenes. Uh, you know, the Essenes were the ones that truly taught Yeshua the way, which is the real true Christian Christianity. I mean, again, the Gnostics, the Cathars. A lot well, of it's, it's, it's yoga, isn't it? Ultimately, it's still it yoga. I mean, it's, they stole yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, I, again, it's the same teachings, right? But depending on where you are in the world, it, it's different names. But the Essenes talked about that 
again, all of this is lost, as you know, that they didn't even allow marriages unless the people were astrologically aligned correctly. Now, I just bought a profound book. Hold on. You, you would be the guy to talk about this. And of course, I got to find it. Hold on. It's somewhere real close to me. Uh, 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 of course, when I need it, it's not here. But it's a, it's a book on astrology. Oh, here it is. Uh, it's called The Influence. So by the way, you can't even get this book. It's literally not allowed to be had. What? It's called it's called The Influence of the Zodiac Upon Human Life. Wow. Okay. okay. With character readings of persons born under the cusp by an author by the name of Eleanor Kirk. Forgotten books. This well, is profound information, okay, about the things that you already understand and know way better than I do. But this has been forgotten or covered up or suppressed or whatever you want to talk about. But again, the Essenes did not allow in their discipline, you know, which again is what I would call true Christianity. If there was a such a thing, um, yeah. people, people who did not astrologically align could not be wed. They could not be together because they knew that energetically, and you know that we're just beings of energy and frequency, it would not work. Mm. Well, I mean, what's crazy is, I mean, every astrologer does this, by the way. So if you're just an astrologer watching, you're guilty of this too, okay? Like, whenever I meet anyone, I always ask for the birth details just to check out what's going on. Not in a romantic way. Sometimes sure. maybe if it's a woman and she's single, you know, and there's a little bit of a connection, maybe I will check that out. But even, even guys as well, I'll just check them out to see you know, especially on a progressive level, the progress theme. Oh, well, on February 24th. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just a progress chart, just to see, you know, what kind of um, energies brought us together, the timing of things and so on. Sure. When was that book um, written, by the way? Uh, good question. I literally just got it last week and I have not read it yet, other than my wife and I looked at like what they say about, because she's a Sagittarius and I'm a Pisces. It was yeah. republished in 2018. But it's way, way older. I'll have to find it for you. I'll get back to you on that. I mean, look at this. Yeah. It was it was like an early, I would say the early uh, 19th century. Wow. Okay, yeah, it's that's insane. Really oh, there it is. 1894. Oh, my God. Okay. I'm going to gonna have book, to I'm gonna have read it. Profound. I'm going to have to read it. I'm yeah, gonna have it, to read it. it's definitely profound. Profound mm. book. It was recommended to me by one of my mentors. They're like, you need to read this. Yeah. Because there's a lot in here. But anyway, I'm, I don't I really hijack. I just had my higher self connect to me because all the hairs on my right arm. So uh, so I wanted to make this statement. I've said this on my podcast before, but not to you. I mean, my higher self is really resonating right now because uh, Maureen St. Germain uh, teaches in some of her books the way to, for any of us to truly connect to your higher self, again, when you're working on doing it. She says that you can ask this question, higher self, is it in my highest and best interest too? And usually you want to ask a yes or no question. But when you're really in tune and attuned, you will get feedback. And my feedback, and I've been doing this for a long time, but my feedback, Ray, is my right arm, all the hairs stand up. And I mean, it's like static electric, electrical charge. I mean, I feel it. I just felt it when I said that. And then sometimes also the back left side of my neck the hairs all just shoot up right it's like it's like i mean it's different for everyone by the way yeah it's everyone, totally but, different for but, everyone. Like, but for me sometimes to me it's like a bolt of lightning comes through the wow. top of my head yeah. and i feel it go down my spine yeah like and it, and it like makes me shiver it does give me goosebumps as well sometimes awesome. before when i was answering one of the questions i think it was about the higher self i yeah. felt yeah. I did yeah. feel that as well. Yeah. Um, but also in my gut as well. I feel it in my gut when something doesn't quite feel Trust right. Your I just, I just Trust know. your gut. Trust your gut. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the gut, remember when they say trust the gut, if we want to get into like health optimization, the gut brain is now, they know, responsible for more biological responses than the brain up here is. So yeah. the gut, when they say trust your gut, that's coming from that. There's a brain down there, and it definitely isn't going to let you down. It's connected to divinity. There's also a brain in the heart as well. That's right. 
the right. mini brain and the heart is actually the true seat of intelligence yeah, into right. of wisdom the brain totally. is knowledge but the heart is wisdom that's right so that's so right. like obviously you need the brain when you're crossing the road you know and you can see oh the, the lights are on red i can cross the road now yeah. blah 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 doing mundane things like that the brain yeah okay cool but obviously the heart is where you should go when you're seeking advice, you're seeking guidance, you, you're about to make a huge decision. You should always check in with the heart center, of course. But I like the, to call the heart. The heart is the flux capacitor. Oh, my. That is so crazy. Dude, it is the coherence Dude, capacitor. look, look at this. There you go. There yeah. is like that is my favorite yeah. movie of all yeah. time. By the oh, way, there were so many, there were so many unbelievable Easter eggs revealed in that movie. That oh was the, that was a very powerful, like a uh, white magician Freemason movie. <clears throat> they put a lot of information in that movie. Have you ever oh. seen that video? They analyze like every sequence of what's actually happening in that movie. Back to the I future. mean, I I got it like totally. Just I mean, I I watched it as a child, just didn't understand what was going Transfixed, on. I, yeah. I was like I was like three or something. I mean, parents loved it, but like twenty one gigawatts. Why? <laughs> The only thing that would generate that is a bolt of lightning. Yeah. yeah I've memorized like every line of the movie. It's profound. Ronald Reagan, the actor. <laughs> yeah. Like, like uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. Like, that is my go to movie whenever I have a hard day and I just want to chill. I'll just put Back <laughs> to the Future on and just. It's it, so it, makes good, me, dude. it makes me just feel like I'm at home again, honestly. And and isn't I'm that a, funny I'm though a, that we're both talking about the same movie and that we have this resonance and how again because you know Hollywood we know what Hollywood really means right but there is the battle between light and dark going on in Hollywood. But do you know on the Back to the Future I always ask people this question like do you know when Marty on the on the very beginning and he blows the speaker doesn't he and right. then the doc calls him and says you know it's eight twenty five and he says oh I'm late for school or whatever and then he rushes out and then the Power of Love song comes on. And yeah. he's he's at the back of you know people's trucks getting a lift to school. You can just feel the innocence of that yeah. time, can't you? Yeah. You yeah. can feel that innocence in the society yeah. back then. I yeah. don't think there was as much darkness in in Hollywood and 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 society as a whole back then no. as there is no. now. There no. wasn't as much corruption or anything. There was just you know such an innocence that we it came out in 1985 i was yeah. born in 1986 right. the year after so i'm still part of that era in that sense and yeah i really miss that time to be honest so in some ways i do yeah well i mean look man i want to get back to it and we can talk about this at the end or, or we don't have yeah, to we can yeah. do another podcast but this we are now in the enslavement age of AI and AI, all of computing, all of computing, regardless of how much you want to debate it, because yes, you and I are having this amazing conversation and you are in England, right? And I'm in Southern California. So we have this ability where we can, you know, utilize it to our our best interest and our gain. But then if you aren't using it as a tool and you're just constantly consuming. It's it, it's really bad, and you know the book that I just read by Leo Zagami, who by the way I'm doing a podcast with last later this afternoon. I mean, he just came out with a book three months ago, uh, Confessions. It's his final book. He's not writing any more books, and it's very ominous. And mm. he basically says that you know the NWO, whatever you want to call them, he call them the Fourth Reich, call them whatever, the Great Resetters. They have already accomplished their mission, and. It's now a matter of each of us as individual souls to bring our higher selves to the point of awareness so that we stay in resonance all the way up until whatever happens. And again, that's what I will say is the darkness, more darkness is coming. There will be a dawn, the light wins, it always wins. We know that there will be a golden age, there will be a, a new earth, but how we get there is the question. And the only thing you can do as an individual soul is stay in resonance and again, serve creation at your highest and best without attachment, without expectation. Well, we've and just come it. full circle there because, you know, you're essentially saying the same thing I said at the beginning yes. to your first question is to stay centered, learn how to access that stillness within and to exactly. feel, feel aligned with who you truly are. That's the only way to it navigate is. these very, very tumultuous waters that we're yeah. in right now, for sure. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides. Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10. 
dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Yeah, and you know, you, you, you being the student that you are, he says in the book, and, and again, this was a 33rd degree Freemason from Italy who left because he knew, he knew how corrupt it became, uh, but very knowledgeable about the power structures. And he basically just said, look, they are running a Jesuit Freemason revelation end times Bible script. This is what they're running on this planet right now. And whether or not you conform to it is dependent on where you place your heart. He's like, if your heart is in, with Jesus and the kingdom of God, you know, he doesn't talk about the higher self like you and I do, but he's like, you don't have anything to worry about. Literally nothing, you know, and that is the truth. I mean, I mean, again, you, you know, we can prop <laughs> gloom and doom and end times and Bible revelation stuff. But it doesn't matter if you are with the kingdom of God, with Jesus in your heart, work, you know, enabling and connecting every day to your higher self through your inner work. Yeah, but the thing is, the, the thing that, like, makes me wonder about what you've just said is, um, like, before we were just talking about how people externalize religious scripture, etc., yeah, right. religious teaching, and really that's what those people are doing as well. Right. By That's trying right. to manifest the apocalypse totally. or whatever. But did totally. you know that Revelation used to be called the Book of Apocalypse? Yep, yep. And right? the, and the Book of Apocalypse right. is the revealing. That's it. Yeah, the revelation of your true self. It's exactly. actually an inner right. experience revelation. Right. And totally. because, because the whole book uh, are St. John's revelations right. with his master, Jesus. That's right. And, you know, and the seven churches of the seven chakras, you right. know, you, they can all be called. It's all an inner science. That's right. So... I, I personally, Jay, I stay away from the whole Illuminati. I know it, it, there is there is elements that are real to it. I'm not sit, calling you a conspiracy theorist because <laughs> it can't be a conspiracy if it's true. I'm you a know. conspiracy but analyst. The, but at the same at the same time, that's not my focus. Of my focus not. is primarily becoming a vessel, an instrument yeah. for the device. That's the only that's focus, it. dude. That's the only. That's focus. it. Because anything else is just a distraction. Absolutely. Everything else is a distraction completely. Yep. And yeah. obviously, one thing I want to say, though, about, you know, your next guest, you know, what he said in his in his last book that he wrote, where he said they've already accomplished what they wanted to accomplish. I do believe there is an element of truth to that because everyone is addicted to their phone exactly, now. Dude. They AI can't put this down. Yeah. Twitter went down earlier, didn't it, for like 30 minutes or something? People losing their shit because Twitter's gone down. Like, what I tend to do every now and then is just to delete my social media apps yeah. from my phone. And whenever I want to go on social media, I'll just use my laptop instead. But it means that now I'm not looking at this all day, right. every day. Right. You know, I, I'll just use it to listen to music or sure, an audio book sure. or sure. whatever. Sure. You know, like, so that's one way you can combat that. I'm not saying these phones on social media and any of this is negative at all. It's all neutral, depending upon how it's right. used. That's right? Exactly. So, it's a tool. It's a tool. Yeah. A tool. So use it. And my advice to your listeners is to use it, but don't let it use you. That's right. And remember, uh, into that statement, being in this earth is creating. Being of this earth is consumption. And the dark side, again, whoever they want to be and, you know, without defining who they are, parasitic, negative energies, they right. want you consuming Netflix, consuming porn, consuming video games, consuming, consuming, consuming YouTube, it, it, never creating, never critically thinking, never using discernment, never being curious. Like you said, when you were a kid, you were curious. Today's kids, bro, they literally at five and six years old say, I'm bored. Why? They, they all they want to do is watch other people play video games. I mean, think That's about it. that. They literally go to stadiums to watch other people play video games. Yeah. That right there, dude, is your you're you're captured. I mean, I Personally, I like video games. Of course. You know, and I like, but I mean, I don't sit there, play them all day, every day. But let me just show you something really sure. quick. Because I'm, like I did tell you, I'm also a novelist. So my first, my first novel is about to be released. And here's a poster of the front cover. 
here. There's the poster. You, 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 so you drew that? I designed them, yeah, but my friend, man. my friend from Barcelona, he drew them digitally for me. Very good. Like, I'm not very good at digital drawing, but um, he's amazing. Um, but anyway, that's I've used video games, especially like the Final Fantasy games that I've played, which are really story-based games on sure. how characters develop and everything. It's really just like what, reading a story in video game format. But th- but those games have inspired me to create. Unfortunately, most kids are just playing Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto, you know, and that's why we are seeing well, shooting, a lot of first-person shooter games. Yeah, really. yeah, I, 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 I stay away from that personally. I don't like them games. I never have. Um, but that's why we're probably seeing kids going into school shooting kids as well, and you know, wanting to right. be like someone in Grand Theft. No, it's Auto. all mind control, man. Yeah, the, dark, yeah. the dark side has created. And again, it's in his book. And again, I know you know all these things and a lot of my audience knows all these things. And you are right. It's about focusing on what we can control, which is our field. But this is a very interesting place. But ultimately, and we'll finish the show on this because I do want you to cover your future self-building, which is critically important topic in in, in conversation. Um, You know, uh, Neville Goddard, and I know you use Neville Goddard, Mm. you know, uh, the wish fulfilled. We create and manifest every second of our reality by Absolutely. our words, thoughts, and actions. So I always say your words must be conscious, your action, or I'm sorry, your thoughts must be focused, and your actions must be massively, lovingly intentional. And if you are doing those things as much as you possibly can, you are creating a perfect heaven on earth reality. Absolutely. Your word is your wand. First That's of all, right. 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 That's what Florence Scovel Shin said. That's she's right. another she's another mystic from God. Oh, dude, I've read all of her yeah, books. Yeah, like yeah. My wife's so, favorite author. Yeah. So like my future self builder, like the, the name is a little misleading to be honest, but it's still relevant because all things already exist. So all versions of yourself already exist. All future versions of you, Jay, they already exist as exactly. potentials in the quantum field. Yeah. Now the future self builder, I take people through seven steps where I help them design a version of themselves that they prefer to shift to, right? So I take them through seven steps, you know, which is first of all, acceptance of where they are in the here and now, you know, and then becoming more self aware, asking themselves what beliefs are, are inhibiting their ability to embody that vision of themselves and so on. There's seven fundamental steps that I take them through. And ultimately what this does is helps them shift to the timeline of their preference, which already exists. So it's like on a video game where you're you're creating a character, for example, you're building a new self. Yeah. You're building a new persona, a new vision, a new version of yourself. And by doing that, it helps you shift to the timeline of your preference, but it's not as if you're actually building a new self. It's just that the process seems as if you are building a new self, but that that process is ultimately what helps you shift to the self that already exists. You see what I'm saying? So it's really just a tool to help people become who they truly are. And Dr. Joe Dispenser does similar work as well. Yeah. Um, you know, there's many people who do it. I just called it a future self builder. I thought it sounded cool. Um, <laughs> so that's another part of my work as well, because really my goal, like, you know, I've got this in my office space, you know, out of time. It's to get out of time. My goal is to help people get out of time. Be the light. That's another one, because the light is transcendence of time. Because All time we is light. Because time is darkness time is illusion right right right? so time is a necessary component to have this experience don't get me wrong you know but that's why i'm writing a book about time as well i can't wait to see it man let me me make sure you send me the pdf when you have the first one i'd love to read it but even in astrology satan and saturn are correlated as well satan is not some man with horns and a pitchfork who's gonna you know um send you to hell and do weird things to you like <laughs> he's actually satan is that illusion of separation of time and space and relativity right. and you know so the transcendence of time is the key and that's why you know via the future self building i help people see that all things already exist now that's right and that you know the 
Well, 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 with that transcending of time, and by the way, man, this has been amazing. This yeah, conversation been has been absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm happy to give you the video file if you want it to. Uh, but uh, I always say this when I you know, talk to people. Um, the only way you can transcend time for most people from a belief standpoint or an awareness or knowing, whatever you want to call it, is to realize that you are an infinite eternal being, that you are not you know, Ray, Ray or Jay Campbell in these physical avatar body, meat suit, sack, you know, whatever flesh puppets, whatever you want to call us. And <laughs> we are vibrating particles and hopefully oscillating waves of consciousness. If you Absolutely. saw us, you know, outside of this third dimensional, what I call prism prison, where we can't see everything, we would be mm. balls or orbs of light, biophotonic, uh, absolutely. biophotonic absolutely. plasma. I and see. I actually see them all the time, by the way. Do do, do you see blue ones, by the way? Do you see see blue blue ones? Blue and green. In fact, I took a picture of one the other night, and my wife and I both have the same. We just upgraded our phone for the first time in three years. We were both taking a picture of the same thing, and only I was capturing it. I'll send it to you when I get off the show. Before, before, while I was talking to you, I saw the big blue one go psh. Yeah, they happen all the time. I see them all the time. Yeah. So that's what they are. They're consciousness beings, energy beings, Mm. you know, maybe maybe higher beings, uh, angels, whatever you want to call them, uh, are, um, what's the word, guides. But, but, but when a person can recognize that and can be good with that awareness that they are an infinite eternal being, they really do lose the fear of finite existence, which is the whole physical body death. I mean, think of how many people, Ray, their whole life is based on, I got to do this because I'm going to die. And so they're so limited and they're so quantified by that. You know, I have friends who are very, very well-to-do, high net worth people who want to consult with me, you know, and be like, I just want to be like you, bro. Like, all I do is I sit back and I think if I die, who's going to take care of so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And And I'm always like, you know, but that's where they are because they're limited by that fear of death. And so it's like, once you get out of that, and know that you are an infinite, eternal, you know, ever expanding cosmic consciousness. You don't have that. And so you're, there is no fear. Nothing is fear. You don't, you're not fear based. You don't look at somebody outside who comes up to your house and does a analysis as somebody who's going to rob you. But when you're again, separate from the love of God, from a mindset standpoint, you know, you have fallen so far in your consciousness that you're separate. You are in fear. Everything creates fear. Well, Fear is really just a side effect of being misaligned with who you truly are. So the moment you realign, there's no, like I said before, there's no fear because you're beyond time. Like the the only way to go beyond time is to become pure consciousness. That's right. Because the mind, the thought patterns, the ego, you know, is bound by time and it always will be. That's why it it is mortal. It dies. It's got a beginning and an end and that's okay. Poor. The consciousness remains and you know when we become transcend ourselves in meditation or prayer or whatever you want to do um you know that's where we realize our eternal nature that yeah. is just the that really everything we've discussed throughout this to- podcast for example that has right. been the answer to everything right hasn't it it's just re knowing that deep within you are eternal you are a consciousness there's a fly there um but Knowing that intellectually isn't enough. You have to have the actual experience. And that's unfortunately why a lot of people who just externalize their religion, for example, right. Christianity as well, they're missing out. Yeah, they they're are. missing out. And that's why a lot of them don't believe that they are one with God, one with right. the Father, because they believe that God is some separate entity exactly. sit, sitting, He's sitting on, a on a chalice with a golden <laughs> trident. Like this, just sitting there like that. On on his laptop, just saying, "Oh, Ray, Ray, Sinner! Sinner! yeah, Sinner! you know." But it's just it's just an archaic symbol. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't well, it mean means everything. It means everything for the for who, the the dark forces that created it to keep people away. Let, let's let's end on this subject sure. then. Like, yeah. what is the dark force to you? Tell me what you believe. Man, it I is. wish I knew what it was. I, I, the best way I can define it is the. The, the beings or consciousness that have chosen to believe that they are separate from source God okay. and from an energetic construct, they exist on uh, 
being parasitic and bringing others into their parasitic energy field, right? Because everyone is energy and frequency. And if you're, again, thinking of this map, when you're vibrating what I call in victimhood, yeah. you're so fear-based that from a biological construct, your physical body is locked in a autonomic nervous system feedback loop of cortisol, fear, survival, sleep, survival, total survival programming. Exactly. And then, you know, what happens when you're locked into that? Well, you eat uh, unrestrained, you can't, you have no energy to exercise. So now your physical vessel deteriorates. And so now they've caught, co- they've got you stuck in this vibration. Again, I just call it the vibration of victimhood. And so whoever it is, you know, I mean, there's a million different names for it, depending on culture. It's just an energy that is sank so far away from the idea that they are loved by God that they literally have to feed off of more and more souls that they can get into that same energy. And I'll, I'll liken it to the AI, right? And this is where Zagami goes with it, that he calls it cyber Satan. And again, he knows it's not the Satan construct of religion, but it's the energetic cybernetic aspect of uh, uh, being parasitic. And that is where AI is doing to the planet. Like you said, I mean, the AI is this. Well, this is well, I so mean, many people are enslaved by it. That's one way of looking at it. I've never actually correlated um, Satan with AI personally, but you cyber, know, that's, a, that's, an, is what he that, that, that's an interesting one. But what I'm talking more of an archetypal level, okay? So in astrology, for example, the planets really are kind of plugged sure. into certain archetypes, yeah. like Mars, for example, you know. It, Mars is connected to passion, you know, determination, etc. Now, I'm sure you've heard of the seven deadly sins, mm-hmm. right? And also well, the yeah, seven, yeah, and the, 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 the seven, movie. the seven heavenly virtues as well, which combat them. Okay, and each one of those sims, sims, sins can be um, correlated to one of the princes of hell, right? I'm not saying it's an actual demon form, but like on an archetypal level. Right. So, for example, envy is correlated with Leviathan. Right. Right. Now, when people are envious, for example, that means it. Well, I've just had major deja vu when I said that, by the way. Wow. Um, Like when people are envious, they're plugged into that archetype and they're under the influence of Leviathan in that moment. But also, conversely, when you are, you know, for example, merciful and you're connected. Maybe you're connected then to one of the angelic aim forces, the angelic archetypes, which you could be maybe Michael or Gabriel or Uriel or Raphael, etc. You know, these are real forces. I'm not saying that people with wings and, you know, they've got a sword and they're going to come down and, you know, whatever. No, they're just symbols of what's going on on a more universal scale. Because really, all the external forces, right? There's good external forces and there's dark external forces, and everything is trying to catch your perception. Everything right. around you is vying for right. your belief. Right. So there are so many trapdoors around us saying, believe that way, believe you're unworthy, believe you're undeserving, don't <laughs> eat 10 bags of Doritos, go and, you know, go and do this, go and do that, right. blah, 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 right. Right. you know, to keep you plugged into those demonic forces. And you know what? When I first started awakening, when I first began my awakening journey, I kept having demonic dreams, dreams where demons would come to me and sure. I would ha- actually have to kill them. Yeah. I would actually have to get rid of them right in the dream. And that is, I had a golden sword in one of them and I was protecting me, me little that's, sister. That's, that's Archangel Michael's sword, by the way. Well, uh, I didn't know that personally, but like this, this nine foot beast coming at me, it had all slime and everything. I couldn't even see its face. It looked like something out of Resident Evil or something. But was it, it was a reptilian? Walking, but it was walking towards me. And as it stepped on the earth, the entire planet shook. That's how powerful, powerful it was. But I sliced it in half and it disappeared. Right. Yeah. yeah. But that's me severing on a in a level that's me severing my link to that exactly. archetype right you know so demons and angels are connected to archetypal forces right. Right. so what's actually happening the whole dark side is simply that because right. those are those dark archetypes are designed to keep us limited to right. keep us in a limited reality to yes. keep us from really achieving our destiny 100%. and it's all part of the game of life because ultimately 
behind the screen, behind the curtains of life. We're all friends. It's an illusion. Duality is an illusion. It's all an illusion, but you've got to play the game while you're in it. You've got to overcome it. You've got to be the light. Of course right. you have. So the key then is to recognize which archetypes you're plugged into. And that's what I use astrology for as well, by the way, to help people really go beyond that and to really become a living embodiment of the love of God. I love and that. You, you know, so the, you've got to be able to look at this on a cosmic scale because exactly. it's not just the Earth. There's yeah. many star systems that are under this influence because these archetypes are universal. They're not just right. bound to our right. galaxy or solar system or planet. So, you know, yeah. It, I just, mean, uh, I'll, I'll summarize and then you can tell people how to connect with you and stuff like that. I mean, obviously your website yeah. and socials have been up, but the easiest way to summarize everything you just said is literally your vibration which is your consciousness, your frequency, your energy, your biofield, ultimately determines whom you serve from an archetypal standpoint. You, if perception, you are, perception is power. That's right. That's but if you're vibrating in fear or victimhood or shame or any of these things, and by the way, we all are at various points and times in our life cycles, you're going to serve the archetypes of the parasitic dark energy. But if you're not, and again, the great Walter Russell said the path is you're born into the jungle and then the, the truck begins to, to the mountaintops northward. Right. I mean, that is the journey of the soul. You know, it's into whatever up to the, the top. It, again, if we think of archetypal heaven slash higher dimensions, higher states of awareness, higher states of beingness. That's that's the path. And so, like, if you're vibrating up here and again, you know, people are always like, but Jay, how do I raise my vibration? Well, when you're vibrating in resonance you're coherent. So that means that literally genet uh, energetically your field attracts people of like, you know, you're attracting others of resonance just as the opposite's true. So, I mean, you know, again, just to wrap it all up of a profound podcast. Um, I, I think it's important that people understand that it's so important today to work, to not worry, but to, 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 to persevere, to raise their field, to increase their consciousness and then when they do that as that individual job, because that's really all you have control over is yourself, uh, you will then raise the field and the frequency of all the people that you come into contact with. It's really absolutely, awesome. absolutely, yeah. Like exactly. if you look, if you just look at that picture behind you, even though the crown chakra is not there, I don't think like right. the the heart is the center point of the chakra is for the reason, right? Right. right. The yeah, exactly. ascend, the ascendant chakra is a heaven. And right. the lowest, the lower centers are hell. Right. So when you're living via the lower centers, you're experiencing hell because you're living via survival. But when you're experience, when you're living through the higher centers, you're in the kingdom of heaven because you're perfectly aligned. That's the best way to look at it. Beautiful, man. Absolutely amazing. So uh, all your socials are up there right now. But if somebody watches yeah. this podcast and says, "Man, I want to talk to this guy. I want to connect with this guy," well, how would you have them do that? I mean. Like if they wanted to message me personally. Yeah, probably, yeah exactly. Because um, like, you know, a lot of people don't watch this. Yeah, um, probably Instagram would be the okay. best way to get in touch with me. So if you want to drop me a message or whatever. Ray Ray Instagram. 186. Or, no, Ray Ray 86. Underscore. It's Ray Ray, um, Ray, Ray 86 underscore, yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. Um, okay. But also my website is um, rayray.co.uk. And all of my socials are on the site as well. So you can connect to me in any way that you want, of course. And I've also got my own YouTube channel, by the way. Very cool. Um, will we put that on my channel as well? Okay. Um, awesome. I'll make sure but, I put that clip or, I mean, I put all the links in the bottom of the show notes. Yeah. But man, again, brother, I'm profoundly grateful, privileged, honored, humbled for you to be here today. So guys, everybody who's watching this, Amazing show. First off, go buy his book on Amazon. Again, I'll have a link to in the comments. It's a profound book. It, it's actually not a difficult book to read. It's mm. fast. It's a page turner. It's amazing. I mean, again, if you're spiritually inclined, you'll love it. Uh, again, support him. Go to his uh, Instagram page, which is rayray86 underscore. And of course, his website, rayray.co.uk. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.